hi everyone today in this video we are going to discuss the deviations from the beer lambert law what is beer lambert law beer lambert's law give a relation between the absorbance and the concentration of the analyte so which can be stated as a is equal to a b c where the capital a is the absorbance and small a is the absorptivity so this law simply states that absorbance is directly proportional to concentration for a particular analyte at a particular temperature and wavelength of radiation so when we plot an absorbance versus concentration for an analyte we will get a straight line which is passing through the origin because uh, this is just like the y is equal to mx so absorbance is directly proportional to concentration so absorbance is on the y axis and concentration is on the x axis it will give the straight line passing through the origin so b lambert's law states that the absorbance and concentration show a linearity in their relation and sometimes we can observe a deviation from this straight line and we can observe a non linearity in this uh, absorption curve so this non linearity indicates a deviation from the b lambert law so today in this video we will see the different reasons for these deviations and how they can be controlled and minimized to produce again the linearity within the b lambert law so let us see the deviations from the b lambert law they can be classified into three types first one is a real deviation second one is a spectral deviation and third one is a chemical deviation so let us start with the first one real deviation so what is real deviation suppose we have an absorption curve where the y axis is the absorbance and the x axis is the concentration it, in an ideal case it gives a straight line and suppose we have a sample with the concentration c1 when we measure the absorbance of the sample with the spectrophotometer we can observe the absorbance as a1 and let us take another sample c2 and let us measure its absorbance as a2 suppose if c2 is equal to 2c1 that is the second concentration is the double of the first concentration then what happens to the absorption if c2 is equal to 2c1 we can also observe a2 is equal to 2a1 the absorbance is also going to be doubled but sometimes we cannot observe this uh, relation and when the concentration is doubled the absorbance is not uh, relatively doubled because of the real deviation so this real deviation is mainly observed at high concentrations of the analytes suppose we have a sample solution at a high concentration and then we are going to send the source of the light through this sample when the light is going to pass from the air into the sample what happens the speed of the light is more reduced because the sample is present at a higher concentration now let us take a another sample with lower concentration and suppose if you are going to send the light through the sample the speed of the light is less reduced because the sample is diluted and at the lower concentration so now the velocity of the light is not same in the first sample and the second sample in the first sample the velocity of the light is more reduced because of the higher concentration of the analyte so here one of the parameter refractive index is coming into the play now the real deviation is observed at a very high concentration of the analyte where the refractive index is going to coming into the play and interfere with our study so at low concentration refractive index is not significant so when the concentration of the sample is from the 10 to the power of minus 6 to the 10 to the power of minus 3 molar 10 to the power of minus 6 molar means like 1 micromolar 1 micromolar to the 1 millimolar the refractive index will be nearer to the 1 so that's why when we are going to use the spectrophotometers we will prepare the samples in the micromolar concentrations in order to eliminate the real deviation but at a high concentration of the sample the refractive index is significant that means the concentrations of the sample above the 10 to the power of minus 3 molar so whenever the sample concentration is above 1 millimolar the refractive index will interfere with our study and the velocities of the light in the medium and air are different which can affect the intensity of the light when it is going to pass through the air as well as the medium so we will get a deviation from the beer lambert law and we can observe a non linearity in the absorption curve so that's why in order to eliminate the real deviation we have to prepare the samples at very low concentrations 
and when the concentration of the analyte is less than 10 to the power of minus 3 molar to the 10 to the power of minus 6 molar it will have less real deviation in an ideal case we have to prepare the samples at the micromolar concentration to eliminate the real deviation second one is the spectral deviation suppose we are going to measure the sample at a lambda max of 560 nanometer then which range of wavelength of radiation we have to pass through the sample suppose we have a curve of absorbance versus wavelength so here you can observe that the x-axis is the wavelength it is not the concentration that means it is a plot where we are going to measure the absorbance versus the wavelength and we can observe the lambda max value as a 560 where the absorption is maximum for this purpose we are sending the radiation of wavelength range from 550 nanometer to the 570 nanometer so the bandwidth of this wavelength radiation is only 20 nanometers so let us take another example where we are measuring the lambda max at 560 nanometer but this time we are sending a radiation of a larger band it is starting from the 520 nanometer to the 600 nanometer you can observe that the gap is around 180 nanometer so we are sending a larger bandwidth of the radiation what happens with these two types of radiations the first type of radiation which is having a narrow bandwidth is called as monochromatic radiation but the second one which is having a larger bandwidth is called as polychromatic radiation when we send the polychromatic radiation again we can observe a deviation from the beer lambert law because apart from the analyte other substances can also absorb in the polychromatic radiation which results in the spectral deviation so polychromatic radiation is a larger bandwidth radiation for example we are sending a radiation of 400 to 700 nanometer so bandwidth is around 300 nanometer so this is a polychromatic radiation it should not be used for the spectral analysis this polychromatic radiation can be sent through a instrumental component monochromator monochromator is the device which can convert the polychromatic radiation to monochromatic radiation so when the light is going to pass through this monochromator it can be converted into a monochromatic radiation having the bandwidth of uh, having less bandwidth for example 550 to 570 nanometer that means having a very narrow bandwidth of 20 nanometer so this type of radiation what we call monochromatic radiation so in order to prevent the spectral deviation we have to use the monochromatic radiation that is the radiation with the narrow bandwidth so by sending the polychromatic radiation into the sample we can observe the spectral deviation sometimes we can also observe a spectral deviation due to the stray radiation stray radiation is the unwanted radiation which reaches to the detector resulting from the reflection refraction or scattering of the light by the solid particles or any other types of molecules so in order to prevent the stray radiation we have to use the polished surface of the sample cell and we have to thoroughly filter the solution and we can also use a blank determination in order to eliminate the stray radiation so spectral deviation is mainly because of the polychromatic radiation as well as the stray radiation this polychromatic radiation can be eliminated by selection of a suitable monochromator now let us see the selection of the monochromator how to select the monochromator suppose if we have a sample the sample is going to show the absorbance from uh, 460 nanometer to the 660 nanometer with the lambda max at uh, center of this uh, curve then what is the bandwidth of this absorption we can observe this uh, natural bandwidth nbw as uh, 660 minus 460 that is 200 nanometer the sample can absorb uh, with a bandwidth of 200 nanometer then how we have to select the monochromator we have to select the monochromator such that the uh, the slit width of the monochromator is less than the one tenth of the natural bandwidth of the sample so in this case we have already seen the sample is having a natural bandwidth of 200 nanometer so when we take the one tenth of 200 that means it is 20 nanometer we have to select the slit width of the monochromator less than the 20 nanometer then we can see only monochromatic radiation and we can eliminate the spectral deviation so the selection of the monochromator depends on the natural bandwidth of the sample this natural bandwidth is the absorption wavelength range in which the sample can show a significant absorption 
so the slit width of the monochromator should be less than one tenth of the natural bandwidth in order to eliminate the spectral deviation third type of deviation is the chemical deviation chemical deviation is observed because of any association dissociation as well as ph change within the sample so any of these process can result in the change in the absorptivity when the absorptivity changes we can observe a deviation from the b lambert law for example we are going to analyze the phenol in the phenol you can observe the two lone pair of electrons are present but when the ph of the solution becomes alkaline at the alkaline ph or at high ph phenol can be present as phenoxide anion now this phenoxide anion is having two lone pair of electrons just like the phenol along with the other lone pair of electron because of three lone pair of electrons it will have more oxychromic effect which shows an increase in the absorptivity for example phenol shows the lambda max at 270 nanometer whereas phenoxide anion shows in lambda max at 287 nanometer you can observe a bathochromic shift that means an increase in the lambda max value along with the bathochromic shift the absorptivity is also going to be increased so phenol shows one type of absorption phenoxide anion shows another type of absorption in this way whenever the ph is not constant in all the samples again we can observe a deviation from the b lambert law because phenol may be converted to phenoxide anion which increase the absorptivity similarly when the concentration of the sample increases the molecules can associate to form the dimers and polymers which will again have a different absorption in this way either association dissociation or change in the ph may result in the deviation from the b lambert law and because of the chemical properties so this is called as chemical deviation in order to prevent the chemical deviation we have to check whether the sample is undergoing either association or dissociation and we have to fix the ph by using a suitable buffer system so that's about the deviation from the b lambert law the deviations can be observed either by real deviation spectral deviation and chemical deviations real deviation is because of the high concentration of the analyte spectral deviation is because of the polychromatic radiation or stray radiation and chemical deviation is mainly from the either association dissociation or change in the ph so that's for today if you like this video please subscribe to our channel share this video with your friends post your comments in the comment box thank you for watching this video